I'm John Chaya. I'll be your host today for Major Hope. And our idea is just an idea that we're developing right now as a pilot program with Minnesota Oncology and with a few financial advisors, a few churches and cancer support groups to develop a program over the next six months based on what you see as the needs that you have wherever you're at, whether you're a cancer survivor that's been just in diagnosis, whether you're in treatment, remission, recurrence, whatever stage of cancer you're in or type of cancer. So we want to look at who you are so we can develop a training program over the next six months that you can go onto our website. You'll be able to download the videos that we're doing today and also see materials that are on the Major Hope website. And then we're going to have an ongoing training program every month and building a curriculum based on what your needs are. So today is going to be a flyover. We'll have a number of different speakers throughout the days for 45 minutes each. The first 30 minutes will be an interview dialogue that we'll have with our speaker. And then there'll be 15 minutes for questions that you have. We have a person that uh, you know, will give you index cards and you can write the question down we'll take it and uh, have our guest share their perspective on it. Our goal today really is to give you a place to think, to have hope, and to feel safe in your journeys. In late 2010 is when I started having symptoms of uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer, and then early in 2011, that's when it was diagnosed and I started treatment. And for the next six months, I went through and realized that uh, the chemotherapy was much more <laughs> difficult than the actual cancer. And I know there's a lot of different treatments that are out there. I was fortunate, but I know there's people that have radiation treatment, they've had surgery, they've gone through chemo, and it wasn't a short period of time like I had, but you're on a constant uh, regimen. So we know we're all over the place, but we have to start somewhere, and that's what we'd like to do today, is just start and then build. And if you see there's value and you can add to it, you're part of the, the vision. You're the experts. You're the people that have experienced this and are experiencing two major gaps that I found that occurs in the journey with cancer. I was uh, a patient of Dr. Dean with Minnesota Oncology, and fortunately my oncology clinic is only about you know, a half a mile up the road. There was Fairview Ridges Hospital. I had other providers for scans and MRIs and things like that. So I found that the gap I had was the first two months after diagnosis. I had a financial advisor, I had an attorney, I had a great support group here, but the shock of hearing that I had cancer and then the first two months of wondering is what really was a gap for me. I looked on the internet, I talked to different people, I wanted more information, but I didn't know where to start. My wife Beth didn't know where to start. You go on the internet and which website should you look at? You talk to different people and you hear different, you know, perspectives. So what we figured, if we can develop something to fit that gap, so people would be at peace and calm, and one thing I saw was there may be 15 concerns that you have, but nobody's held your hand during that initial time to say, well, you know, if somebody just sat down with me and helped me and my caregivers and family look at what are my concerns and then what are my priorities, and then work with you as you go through that. As you work through your treatment and the journey that you're on, the other gap that we found was after treatment concluded. In my working environment, people thought cancer was just an event. It was when I had the final test where I'm, I'm no longer in need of treatment and then cancer free, people thought it was all over. It was like, okay, now you could just go back to what you've been doing and everything's the same. 
And that's what I found was different. It still impacts me after a year with some of the chemo brain, the insomnia, the neuropathy. And we all know some of that may be forever. And I know some of you have much deeper and more serious side effects. But we want to come alongside you after treatment is over and look at ways to help you. The two major concerns that we saw was the financial concern and the spiritual concern. And we know people are coming from all faiths. We know people are at different stages of what they believe in and their philosophies and their values and the principles they follow. We know that we have people that are concerned about, well, I don't know what's next. I don't know how to think. Where is God in all this? You know, where do I find hope? Where is my faith? On the financial planning side of it, we all know it's, well, do, will my insurance benefits cover this? Or if I'm out of work, how is this going to change my family? How are we going to you know, adjust our expenses and our cash flow? And a lot of you have people like that, but we've brought a group of people together today that are experts in their areas, and we want to be able to share that with you and get a perspective as a start. So we'll have about 30 minutes to have a dialogue, and then you can ask questions, and then we'll take a break after that. And we'll try to keep breaks every 45 minutes so you can get up. There's free refreshments out there. Look at our information table if you like. Talk with each other. Talk with the, the volunteers. You'll see they have you know, name tags that are trimmed in blue. And get an idea, or give us an idea, as well as the handouts we gave you, you know, fill out some of that information so we know the profile that we're trying to develop. And hopefully we could replicate this to all of Minnesota and develop it to the point where we can take it na nationwide and help you. You're the key here. You're the person that we want to zero in on to let you know there's people that care, that you're not alone. 